Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Ozark Sports Report podcast. I am here with the head coach of the Hartville Eagles, Coach Clint Horn. And for today's show, we're going to be doing another weekly recap with the head coach of the Hartville Eagles, Coach Clint Horn. Recapping the games from the last week, Hartville went on to play Plato and lost to them 4-1. to And then they went to play Conway and fell to Conway 3-2. to And then they beat Mooresville 13-3 to in six innings. Coach, what was the uh, main strategy coming into those three games between Plato, Conway, and Morrisville? Yeah, they were uh, three big games for us. Um, Plato is a district opponent, always tough. And uh, Conway and Morrisville are both conference opponents. So uh, three, three games you want to go win. Uh, you want to win them all, but, you know, those have a little more implications on them. And, uh, you know, we went one and two. Uh, we competed in all three games. Um like to say you had a chance we had a chance to win uh those two that we lost but just couldn't pull it out and then you know we kind of got things rolling again uh, against uh morrisville on tuesday and uh you know got, got the sticks going a little bit and uh you know feel good going into the, to the rest of this week so and then with those three games that you played with only one win and two losses what were the advantages that you saw from your team in those three games between Plato, Conway, and Morrisville? You know, we we just we haven't really hit well all year, and uh, we, we just struggled, and some guys are starting to press a little bit. And, uh, you know, we, we've seen good pitching all year. That's what you get when you play a pretty tough schedule, and, and we feel like we play about as good of a, a schedule for a Class 2 team as anybody. And, you know, we go over to Plato, like I said, uh, traditionally very rich program. Final Four was it last year, the year before, and uh, I guess it was two years ago they went to the Final Four. And uh, Coach Vaughn does a great job over there. His kids are always ready to play. Um, you know, they're pretty good right now. they got a lot of juniors, so they're all going to be back uh, next year. Conway, another great, uh, another great program. You know, Coach Blue, multiple Final Fours over there, and, and his guys are always competitive. Like I said, there's a little bit of a rivalry there with us, uh, just being conference foes. And, you know, more still, they've got uh, two or three college signees on that team. And, uh, you know, they're solid, too. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't want to say we are 10 runs better than Morrisville. It's just one of those nights where we came out, a couple things went our way. And, uh, you know, we, we kind of took advantage of a couple of their mistakes. And, uh, you know, if, if we wouldn't have taken advantage of those, uh, you know, it, it's a lot closer game. We had a couple – uh, two out errors that, that we took advantage of, you know, if they make those plays, we're, we're definitely going to score 13 runs. So, um, tough week. Uh, I think we got better from it. You know, we learned from it. Like I said, if, if you're only going to win one out of three games, it's, I guess it's good to win the last one to feel good about going into the next one. So. And with those advantages that you had between Conway, Morrisville and Plato, what were the disadvantages that you saw from your team? out of those three games between Conway, Plato, and Morrisville? You know, we just, we weren't super sharp defensively against Plato or, or Conway. Um, and when I say that, you know, today was our first day that we've been able to get out on our field and actually practice. I don't know the exact date, but it, it was the Friday before we played uh, the championship round of the Clever Tournament. So it had been basically 20 days since we've been able to practice outside. And, you know, just getting those extra ground ball reps, those extra fly ball reps. Um, you know, everybody knows how crazy the spring has been. When it's not rainy, it seems like the wind's blowing 30, 40 miles an hour. So it's just been tough playing conditions. It, it, we're not making an excuse because, you know, our guys know the other teams have to play through it too. It's just, uh, it's not even about who makes the most errors. It's just who, who's going to take advantage when the other team, uh, you know, makes a mistake. And it seemed a lot here lately or, or of our seven losses this year that the other teams have taken advantage and we just haven't, you know, and finally, uh, finally last night against Morrisville, we kind of took that role and, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully our best baseball is ahead of us there. So, like I said, we, we had a good practice today, um, but we got a ton of games coming up. We play again tomorrow and Friday, uh, and then we play again Monday, Tuesday, off Wednesday, and play again Thursday and Friday, then the following Monday. So, not a whole lot of opportunities here to practice outside anyways. Um, so, we've, we've just got to remain mentally tough and, and just deal with it and 
try to keep getting better every day with, with our limited resources. And then in your next three games that you have with Stoutland, Marionville, and Forsyth, what are the corrections that you're going to be making with your team in practice before these three games between Stoutland, Marionville, and Forsyth? You know, today we just we took a good round of, of infield outfield and try to get our guys a lot of extra rep. With it being a Wednesday, we try to get our guys out time to, to get ready and go to church. So, you know, we try to get them some extra reps defensively. And then, uh, you know, offensively, we, we were just up there preaching patience. Um, we kind of kind of did a semi-scrimmage today, uh, very limited, where it was more focused on the offense of uh, just squaring balls up, quality at bats. Uh, you know, get a guy on second. If you make it out, make sure that that guy moves to third. And, you know, squaring the baseball up but waiting for a pitch that we can handle. And like I said, our offense was – uh, as good as it's been all year last night, our guys, uh, they were good again offensively today. Um, you know, so, so we're pretty excited going into the rest of the week. You know, it's about as confident as I've been all year, just feeling good about where our offense is at, even though it was one game. But, you know, that, that's going to be the key. We, we've got to keep taking good at bats to the plate. Uh, pitching's done a great job all year. We're eight and seven. But uh, those seven losses, we probably had a well, we we had a chance to win five, even maybe six of those games. So, uh, you know, pitching has kept us in ball games. We've just got to do a better job offensively of scoring more runs, and defensively of, of you know not giving them more than twenty one outs a game. And then after those corrections, and then we kind of flip the page onto uh, districts as it is now mid April. And districts are about four to five weeks away from now. What is your district going to be looking like? And what will you guys be looking forward to? And we'll be going into your districts. Yeah, we, we go north for our district. Um, it's all Frisco League teams except for us. Uh, Plato, um, you know, I, I think they're the number one seed. I'd say that. They got knocked off by Crocker. Uh, the other night, um, don't know really any details of that game, and, and you know it is baseball, but uh, so Crocker's solid. Um, Richland's also in it, Stoutland and Lakeway. Uh, the problem with our district is we don't. We're going to get to see three of those teams. We'll play Plato. We played Lakeway in our tournament, and uh, we play Stoutland tomorrow, so we're not going to have a chance to play Crocker or Richland before then. Um, but you know it's tough and. When you get to May, you see it every year. Uh, some teams get upset. It, it doesn't matter what you do in March and April. Um, you know, you're just hoping you're playing your best baseball and uh, hope to get a little luck involved there and, and see what happens. So, um, you know, that, that's kind of where we're at. We try not to look too far ahead. And, you know, we still got 10 games left here before we do get to district play. But, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully we turned a corner last night and, and we can keep that rolling for the next 10 games plus the district and, and see what happens. Who all is in the uh, Frisco League besides uh, you guys? That's going to be in your district with Richland, Plato, Lakeway, and Crocker. Uh, that's it. Just adding style. It's a 16 district. Um, so it's those five Frisco League teams and then us out of the Summit Conference and uh, you know, so that's that's where we're at. And you, usually we go south. We're usually in the Summit Conference District, like like we call it. You know, with Seymour and Norwood and Mansfield and Gainesville. Um, but for these two years, Hartville got sent north. Um, it's kind of good to get away. I feel like you know we all of the Summit Conference teams play so much. It's good to see other competition. But uh, you know, like I said, we're excited. Um, we we definitely think we have a shot. To, to possibly win the district, Plato, Crocker, Richland, Stoutland, Lakeway, any, anybody can beat anybody on any given day. Uh, but, you know, we'll, we're excited to see what happens and, and take our chances. So, And if you had any words to say to the coaches of Plato, Conway, and Morrisville that you guys played, uh, what would your words be to the coaches of Plato, Conway, and Morrisville? You know, uh, those guys, uh, like I said, they, they do a great job. Um, probably thank them just just from, you know, taking their brains after games and talking. And uh, like I said, I, I have the utmost respect for all three, Coach Crumpley, Coach Blue, and Coach Vaughn. Um, you know, we, we all talk outside of, outside of the season and, uh, you know, like I said, I, I, I like picking those guys' brains because they've all done it. They've been there. 
Uh, you know, I I don't know about Coach Crumpley, but I know Coach Vaughn and Coach Blue have multiple Final Fours, and uh, they're just all three great guys to learn from. You know, uh, I, uh, that's one of my favorite things to do uh, in between games and, and after games is to pick the other coach's brain about stuff and, and try to get better. You know, that's what it's all about. None of us know everything, and uh, you know, I, I'm a younger coach, so I'm. I'm always trying to trying to find an edge, you know, to help our program out at Hartville and, uh, you know, implement new things that work for them, you know, that have obviously, you know, got them to the Final Four, so... Okay, that is going to uh, wrap up our show for today. We hope you enjoyed our show. We hope you enjoyed us uh, sitting down with the head coach of the Hartville Eagles, Coach Clint Horn. And if you want to stay connected with their social media, be sure to like them on Facebook, follow them on Twitter. Their Twitter is at CoachHorn10. Once again, that's CoachHorn10. And if you want to stay connected with our social media, be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and check, up our, check out our website. And once again, once this video is going to be uploaded, we will mention Coach Horn in this video. And for us that are tuning into the Ozark Sports Report podcast. We want to say thank you all for tuning in to today's show, and we hope to see you guys in the next show. Have a good day, everybody.